Right. Yes, uh, um, I think one can read too much of our modern views back into, mm. into the is Bible. That, is that a risk? Uh, well, it's always a risk, mm. but after all, but it's not a bad thing to read into those texts which you regard as authoritative your own vision of the world, because that it doesn't simply rewrite those texts, it rewrites your vision too. Mm -hmm. it, it, it challenges your own vision to see exactly how, where it has come from and the extent to which it has been endorsed by the, its predecessors. So, but if we don't turn back to the uh, Muslim civilizations and Islamic mm. cultures, there are Muslim scholars who try to um, uh, motivate secularism and the division between the affairs of religion and affairs of state also from the words of the Quran and Hadith yes. and Muslim traditions, uh, which are, I mean, they are trying to uh, adapt, uh, find the roots of an idea which they like in their own tradition. Yes. Is, that, is that not a fruitful uh, effort from their side, would you I say? I think it is entirely fruitful, uh, and the more that it is done, the better. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, but is it, is it hopeless in a sense? No, it isn't hopeless, but there is a great problem. Well, there are two great problems. The first is that, that people who speak for the Muslim faith speak without any particular institutional authority. They're always speaking as the, uh, themselves uh, and whatever they've been able to achieve by way of um, endorsement from their congregations. Mm. But, but the, which, the, is, which is inherent in the character of the organization of Islam, since they, Islam yes. never had a pope and, and bishops a church, and churches. Church. Yes, yes, exactly. And, it, and, it, and Islamic law does not recognize institutions in quite the way that our law, being no. Roman law in, in origin, does. So that there is a, a huge institutional problem about who actually speaks for Islam and what, mm. it, what is the effect of him speaking for it. Uh, but there's another problem obviously that, um, that the Quran is not supposed to be simply a revelation that has been written down. Uh, it is supposed to be the actual word of God mm. and it is very difficult to reconcile that therefore with uh, um, changes in, the, in, in society which are not for, uh, are not, uh, neither either not foretold in the Quran or in some way even forbidden by it. Uh, and this, is, um, this creates an enormous uh, hermeneutical constraint mm. on what, mm. um, what Muslim theologians can say. But of course they still can do this uh, and I think it's a, uh, that is what um, the, the real task of theology has always been to uh, within the constraints laid down by sacred texts nevertheless to extract a viable form of life for mm. human, the human beings who live by those texts. The Ottoman uh, Muslim scholars in the 16th and 17th century even found a term, term, term for it, they called it hile sharia which means uh, going past the Sharia yes. or fooling the Sharia, which, right. was, which was in a way uh, uh, a way of circumnavigating those constraints That's that you're talking about. That's true and of course um, had it been the case that the Turks had remained as it were the leading authorities in the interpretation of the Quran and the leading authorities as the representatives of the faith. Mm. As the Sultan was the yeah, Caliph. Yes, yeah. so the, then things would be very different today. You but think the, so? Of course, yeah. the collapse of the Ottoman Empire made it possible for those uh, primitive Salafists and the, the Wahhabis mm. uh, in, in Saudi Arabia to um, uh, propose themselves as the, as the authorities. So I mean, you can say that the withdrawal of the Turkish Republic from all affairs religious in when it broke its past with the Ottoman yes. Empire uh, created a vacuum. It, well, you, you, that's one way of putting it. It certainly meant that as far as the interpretation of Islam goes, the Turkish voice is no longer heard. No. Uh, what is heard are voices that should have been suppressed and would have been suppressed had the Turkish Sultan retained his position. Mm. Um, that, that's not to say that the Turks were wrong to secularize. On the contrary, I think they did the right thing. They saved, I mean, Ataturk saved Turkey from uh, otherwise total destruction and also set it upon the path of modernization mm. which has made it uh, the successful country that it now is.